Audi has updated the Q8 family and this is here the Audi SQ8, the sporty version with the V8 under the hood. And for you, we have an Autobahn special German motorway with Thomas Nautigefühl in 4K, full screen, full length. Let's go. Here, this really large mask is bright in the SQ8. It's, I think, a very cool look. And for the facelift, they've updated the Audi rings. They are now more two-dimensional and also here in bright. You can also get black Audi rings. So depending on your liking, I think this starting here is actually pretty cool. What do you think? Also in lower part, here these silver contrasts. Yeah, this is really catching also the light when it's coming to the front. News also with the facelift, the headlamps. So the logic there is you have a base LED for the normal Q8. The SQ8 already comes with the first option, the matrix LED. And then even optional for the SQ8 is the HD matrix LED with laser light. It's also equipped here and you can get different signatures actually for the light. So this is one and then you can click it through in the infotainment system on the inside and switch to your personal signature. And that works both in the front and also in the rear then with different styling. So this is some kind of new individualization that is possible. The length at around five meters and the SQ8 in Europe gets 21 inch wheels for the US, 22 inch is already standard and 23 is the option Wow, this is really massive. And the thing is that the suspension is actually quite good. We will also experience it in the driving part. But when you drive through potholes, these 23 inch wheels really hurt, you know? So it does give you a sporty ride, but for comfort also in city driving with potholes, you need to get rid of 23 inch wheels and stick with the smaller ones, 21 or at least 22. Yeah, this will give you more comfort indeed. I also like really the bright styling, once again, to the dark blue color, it's a nice, contrast this Vitomo blue there's like a cave in New Zealand where they have these glow worms that give actually like a nice blue color maybe a little bit lighter even than this one but yeah they always try to find very exquisite <laughs> color names for these in the rear new signature as well and as I said you can click through different signatures and this is here the approaching light so um, you see the sensors actually pick up if someone is coming if I'm getting closer the sensors are recognizing me and saying like, hey, stop, don't come closer. This also works, of course, with a vehicle that's meant to be. And so I think a nice idea because do you know at the traffic light that there are these guys who are driving like that close to the vehicle, look in the back mirror, like, you want to drive in my car or what? What the hell are you doing? And this is maybe a good sign of like, stop, go no further. And here the face lifted rings are more two dimensional once again, also a chrome delete and with the wide accentuations here. So it's an interesting new fresh styling. I think styling of logos, it goes back and forth in, in cycles. Sometimes three-dimensional is a new thing, then again two-dimensional is a new thing. Yeah, and at this moment, once again, two-dimensional is the new thing. Technology-wise, very interesting. A Q8 can either optionally be bought with air suspension. The SQ8 gets the air suspension as standard and also the otherwise optional rear axle steering is standard here. So it goes five degrees maximum in opposite direction in the front wheels. But I feel um, it doesn't go so good on standstill or when you're like in the basement garage going back and forth. It doesn't do too much there. I think BMW and especially Mercedes, you feel more of that rear axle steering, especially when they're maneuvering in tight spaces. And then also optionally for the SQ8, you get a rear differential for torque vectoring, that you have more torque on the curve outside rear, for example. It's like this sports differential. This is one packed together with these red brake calipers and also an anti-tilt control that keeps the car even more upright when you are fast in the corners and so on. Yeah, and more or less essentially making this something like a Porsche Cayenne. Yes, they are also on the very same platform. Very famous, of course, for Audi are these cascading turning indicators in the high light trims, both in the front and also in the rear. Well, you yourself, you don't see it when you're in the vehicle. It's more like a show for people on the outside. I know Leah really loves that. And real exhaust pipes here, four actually, two per side. And they also updated here the S logo at the rear. It's a different strategy how they batch it now. For the normal Q8, you get 3 liter 6 in a diesel and petrol. And here for the SQ8, a 4 liter V8 bi turbo, 507 horsepower. 
yeah, that's more than enough for sure. 4.1 seconds is the acceleration figure, 200 kilometers an hour or 62 miles an hour. Rear wheel biased or wheel drive. Yeah, the RS Q8 would be even more powerful, but it's based on the very same engine as well. The key fob, simple and nice here. The SQ8 has the S badge as well. Then door closing sound is extremely solid and that is astonishing because it's a frameless door and we have rarely that that still has a good sound. Here's a dual insulation glass, by the way, as well, inside of the doors here then with a nice gray microfiber. I love that styling. Also clicking sounds here from the window levers and we have this carbon fiber decal element which is also nice. The inside of the doors uh, is not covered with felt, just the ground has some like rubber covering um, that things don't you know, fly all around. That's the warning like your mobile phone is still in the vehicle. <laughs> then here the steering wheel with S logo, Audi rings, these are still real Audi rings you can actually touch and also the volume knob here, for example, these are real buttons, so I like this more traditional styling. Seats, you either get normal sport seats, at least in Germany, for example, or these here, the S sport seats with integrated head restraint. In other markets like the US or UK, they are more standard and also the animal skin is standard. Here in Germany, I could still order one with microfiber, for example, but not on the UK or the, U or the US market. And that's, of course, a huge downside. They need to offer more animal skin alternatives which are even better in the features like BMW is doing. That's where Audi is lagging behind. Here 189, 6 for 2, a lot of headroom left, no problem at all. This one with a closed roof, there is also one available with the panoramic roof and the steering wheel here up and down in electric way. The ergonomics of the seat is still good. The seat with the separate head restraint would be also a little bit more comfortable, but as I said, not available on all markets cockpit overview. I like this clean layout, just not that they have so much high gloss black piano like there. It's a nice integration of the screen and also when it's off. That is nice, yes, but too much black piano like definitely for my taste or what do you think about this. And this split screen, this is one of the rare solutions where a climate unit is via touch but still well executed so you can click or also swipe and it's easily done actually because it's separated from the rest so you can control it also well while driving. My favorite is always of course if you can turn or click something and the sad thing is Audi, they were the best in the climate unit control with these nice no metal nerd clicking commands. I loved it. My favorite AC units, but yeah, they went in another direction with that. But this is still a good solution though. And um, on the top is the normal entertainment system. You can also use uh, the car internal GPS, but the but here then the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto would be the standard connection. However, then to connect it actually, this wireless is possible or with the cable. And sometimes you want to just charge with the cable. But here the middle console is actually a very bad solution because you fold it up and then look at that, this huge thing here and I don't understand why have they done that? Because then when you put your phone right here, this is the inductive charging pad where the phone easily overheats, it's not cooled or something, you have two USB-C chargers, but then either when you want to put your phone out or maybe put it like here to the cup holders, which are adaptive maybe, then here the cable is getting squished. You you just break your cables there and also your smartphone yourself when you don't want to have inductive charging you have to put it in there even if you put it here everything gets great so this thing damages smartphones damages cables and i can't understand how this has passed the initial quality testing so uh, as if one, no one has tested or driven that vehicle don't understand that but the overall build quality is really nice here for the key fob you have like a dedicated hole here, by the way, where you can easily put the key in. Also the adaptive cup holders, everything is nice, what you touch and feel and so on. I like this more traditional shifting lever, which has really like this thick, big effect. I like that. With backwards for D, forward for reverse. To pick the driving modes, actually, you have to go in this lower screen and hit the drive select. And you also have to press deep in there. Doing that while driving, not ideal, actually. For the touchscreen itself, there's also a feedback mode available that you really have to click in there. That one, however, you can deactivate. And I always do that because I think it's more suitable like we do on the smartphones. We click once and that's it, like here. And I don't want like 
hit like damage the screen with like a bang in there. So I always, that's one of the features I always deactivate actually. I love the steering wheel size, perforation at the side. Yeah, an animal free material would be uh, very favorable for me, but the size itself, you have very good control over the vehicle always. And I really always like the virtual cockpit, different visualizations are available and also updated now with the facelift here, you have these tiny visualizations of the vehicle also with the turning indicators. And you also get a head-up display. Rear doors here also with grey microfiber again, like that, and the carbon fiber, that's very well done. And also here you can get this electric shade, that's very well executed. Look at that. So, and easily control it with the window control lever here, pressing it once and so on. That's how it's supposed to be actually, really cool. And then here, these rear seats, you can slide them backward or forward for legroom or more trunk, you can decide that. And also this is then the lever for the angle of the back seats. You can put them a little bit more behind. But that also means, you know, when you really want to fold them flat actually, and here also you have to press them here, then they lock actually, and then you have to release that lever again to put them up again. Um, yeah, it's secure, but maybe also a little bit complicated. Then the middle armrest has this clicking, and it's also adaptive right here, so that's nicely done. And there's also a ski hatch, so you can fold this middle part. And you also have a separate climate unit here. And it works simultaneously, like in the front, you can slide the temperature and you also get some kind of feedback, also a clicking sound. So yeah, that's also actually nice. And there's good comfort. There's enough leg room left, no problem at all. Enough headroom left, so um, yeah. The, nothing to complain here. It's a huge middle tunnel though in that platform. So sitting in the middle part here, it's also a little bit stiffer from the seat, but yeah, it works with five tall adults. Of course, four is always more comfortable. So what about the trunk? Let's take a look. It's a width of a meter of 40 inches and the normal length here is also a meter of 40 inches. You can see it right here. So this, when I put the seat a little bit forward, then you have even more trunk length. This is the normal position, but you can fold these down individually as well. And the height is about, yeah, it's a little bit less than 80 centimeters, so like 30 inches, very well, well usable. There is this net here available, so you can use it and secure some things underneath. But if you want to access the area below that, then you have to unlock it like this. And there yeah, could be a spare tire as well. This here, the subwoofer, actually. And what's also really nice, this one here, the cover. When I close the trunk now, you can see it stays in this position so far, but then when it's close, actually, it goes back. Let's hit the German Autobahn, put in dynamic mode, and that automatically goes into the S shifting mode as well, so you don't have to do it then here. Everything is set on acceleration from 50 km an hour. Let's go. <laughs> Plop, 200 kilometers an hour. Woo. That was nice. So that was 50 to 200. So 200 kilometers an hour is 125 miles an hour and so effortless. And <laughs> there's no one behind us. It's like a couple of miles away, the next cars are coming. Yeah, this is this power of this 4-liter V8 by tower here with 507 horsepower. 4.1 seconds is the official acceleration figure to one kilometers an hour. Wow, and you see that even when we are hitting higher speeds, they're still always coming. There's no end to that. And a nice growling sound. In the Northern American market, the sound will be even better. Here in the EU versions with the particle filter, that's already a little bit drawn back, but still nice enough. And the 3 liter 6 cylinder, of course, is also a nice engine for this vehicle. It doesn't have as much power, but in most situations it will be actually fine. Difference is here you have, of course, even more sound, even more performance. Then again, also the consumption goes up. So here we end up with about, not when we do the acceleration stuff and stuff, you know, like normal, but also, you know, speed, speed, drive, like autobahn and straight and also some like 130, 140, 150. You score some 12 liters on more kilometers, so like 20 mbg US, 23 mbg UK. In comparison to the six cylinder, with the six cylinder you can save like 
one, one and a half liter on one kilometers, or like two to five mpg, you save then. Um, so not the biggest difference as you would have imagined. So with BMW, the difference is bigger. But the main reason for that is that the BMW 3 liter 6 cylinder is more fuel saving than the 3 liter 6 cylinder Audi. And I'm talking so calmly and easily to you, and Leah is also really relaxed. Although we're driving like 130 kilometers an hour, like 80, 90 miles an hour, and it's absolutely no problem. It's really effortless. Here in the dynamic mode, we also have some more feedback here. And even in the normal mode, actually, the car is always staying upright. So for the SQ8 here driving, the air suspension is standard. So also with a sport air setup. Then also the rear axle steering is standard. What you rather feel when driving slowly, but it's not that much of a significant rear axle steering than maybe like with a Mercedes or something who offer more degree angle turning and so on. And then here also, additionally, or optionally for the SQ8, the vehicle here is spec with that, the rear differential, the sports differential for torque vectoring, and also the anti-tilt control. So the car always stays upright and so you don't have this shaky SUV feeling, even at higher speeds, it just stays straight, you know? And I don't need like this new Porsche or Audi e-tron suspension for that, which actively rules with a single hydraulic. Sounds so nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, Leah said it sounds so nice. Wow. Incredible. 220, 230, and there's no end to it. And it feels so effortless. Now we're going like 250 kilometers an hour. And it feels like nothing, even the noise into that. I mean, we are driving like a standing <laughs> cupboard, like a, you know, like a furniture, uh, uh, size-wise. And it's so silent in here in comparison. So great noise insulation, great quality. And wow, even in the sport and dynamics setting here, it's very good comfort from suspension. When you go to the auto or the comfort setting, then the air suspension is a little bit more forgiving, but it's totally fine. The Audi Sport models always have a great compromise of sportiness and comfort. You don't lose much comfort with them, whereas other sports cars might, or sport versions, might have less, um, less comfort than here. Lane change, even in the comfort mode, because this is also equipped with the entire roll control. You see it on the camera, it does not lean at all into the corners. That's, of course, also good here for the passengers. You don't get, you know, <laughs> we're drifting around here left and right so it's really cool steering also has a nice progressive input it's really direct and precise look at that and once again no shaking up at all if you ask yourself is a sedan or an S8 even better like in, if you think about an Audi S6 or S7 and so on to me it always has more comfort because you just sit lower and there is then yeah, you, you feel the G-forces in a different way, you know, when you're sitting a little bit lower. I feel on long term, it is a little bit more comfortable. The SUV is, of course, better for the entry in and out and so on. Um, yeah, but I feel that the non-SUV vehicles are always better in the driving behavior overall. But this here is, yeah, as far as it gets for an SUV, just excellent. Remember, it's the same platform like the Porsche Cayenne, VW Touareg, Bentley Bentayga, the Audi Q7 as well. And this is a very good platform. They are all very good vehicles. And do I miss, miss a Porsche here at all? Yeah, not at all. I mean, you can easily go here for also for an Audi SQ8 and then yeah, and enjoy this, what you would also experience in the Porsche. It's just one press on the pedal and there we go and we're gone. Wow, this was like a transverse bump, very well mastered. And we are already now at 200 kilometers an hour almost again. Here hard on the brakes because there's a speed limit on top there, no problem at all. So now we have to reduce the speed. Just as AMG obviously is ignoring this, is he? Name so uh, nice for monitor by the way. Yellow sign here, very well integrated in the side mirrors. That's really, really nice. So also assistance systems wise, I activated here on the separate stall column here, underneath. 
Then we're also centered here in the lane. There's also this new assistance <laughs> systems. Oh, oh sorry. bless you, bless you. Oh, yeah. Maybe some blessings to Leah in the comments that, <laughs> that will surely help with yeah. her cold. Yeah. <laughs> so there's this new assistance systems view in the middle instruments. That's one of the big news from the facelift. Yeah, if this is big news from the facelift, you know that there's not so much news with the facelift, but the car has been good overall as well. And now, oh, interesting. I also see like a like a red arrow stressing again. Ah, there's there's a vehicle coming, you know, from behind. So that is interesting, actually. Pretty cool. That was an Opel Corsa with black wheels, yo. <laughs> so there we go. Lane change. And this is also signalized here. Oh, and another symbol in the instruments here that the speed is now unlimited. That's of course also very helpful. So good assistance systems. The only thing I have experienced here a couple of times with Audi vehicles now is it's a, it's a setup thing. But obviously this progressive Audi steering needs very very precise setup. I mean, you see here that the steering wheel is not entirely straight when I want to go straight. It's just like here in this case like a little little bit left turn, and I personally hate that. Some might say, hey, I don't realize it at all. What what are you meaning? You know, like what are you talking about? But it should be like totally straight, but then I'm already steering to the right a little bit. But I've experienced it with several Audis, and it's not that there's fundamentally something wrong with the vehicle. You can reset it up in the workshop. It needs to be done at the original Audi dealer, though. Non-Audi dealers cannot do that, actually, when it's a progressive steering. And it needs to be, like, done very diligently. Otherwise, when someone sets in and does like this, calibrates, then it's stuck like this, you know? So you need to be really precise to have it very straight. So if you have something like that in your Audi, ask your Audi dealer to fix it. Um, probably they won't make it for free. That's the thing. Uh, but to me, it's always a very important thing to do. So the yeah, this is one of the best Autobahn SUVs. Uh, clearly, I really love that. And um, can't make anything wrong with that here on the German Autobahn, both performance and comfort-wise. Well, and about the pricing strategy, an SQ8 is at least 100,000 euros or dollars, and that's already a hefty price. But when you pick some more options and so on, like it is specced with this very vehicle, it's 150,000 euros, and that's super, super expensive. Then you have to think about if it's worth the price. Well, I mean, if you compare it to a Porsche Cayenne, it's still way cheaper. So if you compare them the SQ8 to a Porsche Cayenne, this is the better deal, definitely. And it has the same phenomenal driving dynamics as for that. Some things are missing and can be criticized. I told you that uh, earlier in the interior. If you have missed that, scroll back maybe. But overall, it's, of course, a very good Autobahn SUV driving machine. So astonishing how good you have these driving dynamics uh, and the fun on the motorway although it is an SUV building type. And now you should tune into the competitors. We've recently compared the Mercedes GLE versus the BMW X5 and of course the Porsche Cayenne.